Okay, we're going to go ahead and create a um, object. With that, we're going to apply some forces, show a little bit of finite element analysis on the on the forces, and then uh, move forward. In this particular object, what we're going to do is create a uh, oh, let's create a guitar hanger. So we're going to create our sketch, and it's going to be we're going to create the, the base first, or the foundation. Uh, from that point, we're going to go ahead and create a um, I'm going to start here at the zero, 0, bring it up, and we'll draw another line. Again, bring that up. Do an arc between the two. Make sure that they're tangent. There's the tangency icons. And now we'll start putting dimensions on it. So the first dimension I need is roughly uh, two inches. Okay. Let's use the geometric constraints and use the equal and make this and this equal. We'll also dimension across the two surfaces and we're going to go th that at 2.75. So we've got a 2 inch, 2.75, that's dimensioned, looks good. That's our pathway that we're going to use to extrude our shape. So we're going to finish the sketch. From here we're going to create a second sketch and as you can see when I chose sketch it gives me two, excuse me, the three planes that I can work with. I'm going to go ahead and work on this plane here and I'm going to project the geometry. What I did was I picked the sketch plane on there. I'm going to project this endpoint, which is the end of the line, uh, onto my current location. And we're going to create a circle there. We'll get a big green dot for that endpoint, and we'll create a circle. And we'll dimension the circle at 0 0.30. We'll go to the isometric view, and you can see that that circle's right at the 0, 0 point that we originally started with, which is perfect for what we're having to work with. Okay, let's go ahead and finish this, and we're going to sweep it. And to sweep, we want to make sure of two things. Number one, that we have a path. Number two, we have an object to sweep. And number three, that the path and the object to sweep somewhere touch um, each other. So I'm going to select the path. And you can see that it has basically swept this particular shape. All right, so far so good. We'll choose OK. We now need to create a tail, the tail that actually gets mounted uh, to the wall or to another object. And uh, we're going to kind of make that end a factor, more or less. And so for that to occur, I'm going to need to create a new work plane down the center. So we'll choose, now I can go one of two ways. Um, I can create a work plane tangent to the surface, or I can create a work plane and again use the pathway to help us accomplish that. Okay, so what we're going to do is create an axis, which I've done here. So I've used the axis command and selected the arc and created an axis. And I'll just delete the second one because we don't need two. From there, I'm going to create a work plane, and I know it's kind of hard to see, but I'm going to create a work plane based on that axis, and we're going to select work plane, we'll select the axis, and then I'm going to use the X, excuse me, YZ orientation, and you can see that the YZ is saying that it wants to turn at 90 degrees. No, 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 we don't need to turn it 90 degrees, we want to keep it at zero. So I'm going to create a work plane along that axis at zero. The arrow direction indicates the positive or the, excuse me, the uh, rotational angle. And we're going to keep that at zero. All right, I'm going to put a sketch on it. And so now I've got a sketch on this particular object. So I'm going to project the back edge. Perfect. And I'm going to draw a line from the back edge. And we're going to come out about an inch. 
and choose OK. We'll throw a dimension on it and say one inch. Okay, so now you can see what I've done is I've projected the arc, connected the line to the arc, and projected off one inch. So basically using the work plane, I'm able to create new geometry. I'm going to create a new work plane, um, and I can create a plane here based on this endpoint. And that is exactly the endpoint that I want. I want it to be perpendicular to the other one. So I just selected the endpoint. It's going to be perpendicular to that line. So I'm going to left mouse click again, and now I've got a new work plane. We're going to create a sketch plane on that work plane, and we'll draw a circle. Well, we should probably project that geometry of that line first, and then draw a circle so we know where the center is. Diameter of the circle is going to be the same diameter as the other tubing, which is 0 0.30. Okay, we'll finish that sketch. So now you can see I've got another setup for, that's right, a sweep. So if I do a sweep here, we'll select sweep, it already knows that that's the surface that I want as my uh, profile. I highlight the path and everything looks pretty good. Well, pretty good. Take a look what happened though. So this particular object stopped right at the tangency point. Why? Because the path stopped at the tangency point. That's problematic because I really do want this to be intersected. I want this to be a really good fit. Theoretically this would be welded um, and we would have a weld seam at that point. However, for what we're working on we want to make this a smooth and seamless connection. So sweeping isn't the right thing to do. So let's cancel it. Well here is the right thing to do. What we need to do is go back to sketch number three, which was the line that we did. I'm going to double click on it. Okay, it's going to flip it vertical again. And let's pan this up. I'm going to take this line and make it a construction line. I could also do it as a center line. Matter of fact, the center line would be just as good as a construction line. So all we're going to do now is that's going to be a work surface. Okay, that's a construction plane or a center line plane and now what I'm going to do is instead of using the sweep I'm going to extrude the circle. See it wouldn't extrude before if I chose extrude it would give me an error message because it would try to extrude this line because the line was an object. Now that we only have one object which is the circle we're good to go. Let's go ahead and, and say we want to extrude to the next uh, face or body and now take a look what happened here let's go look at look at the same view you can see now that I've got a very good tangency connection between the object so it's actually going to connect the whole face here I'm going to get the really nice nice joint of the connection so I'm going to choose OK so there you go we just spliced in that particular object alright so now we can turn off sketch number three's visibility that will get rid of the extra dimension there and so we've got some work planes that we can turn off if we choose to but this is basically the object that I wanted to put some analysis to we're gonna put a fixed point on the back because that's where it would be fixed we're gonna put some um, forces out on the ends so to do this we're gonna save our work first and then move into the environments tab which will get us into the stress analysis tool. So for stress analysis we're going to go ahead and select the stress analysis tool, create our simulation, we're going to use our static analysis uh, mode, and we got to put on a material and uh, do a few more things with that. I'm going to hit the plus sign here and we've got a couple of sweeps and extrusions. The uh, Don't worry too much about the work planes, uh, if they get in your way we can double click on the FEA guitar holder here which is what I called it and we can turn the work planes off matter of fact let's do that actually we'll need to switch back to our out of the environments back into 3D models and 
back to stress analysis and finish stress analysis so I can go back and turn off the work plans. And back to environment, stress analysis, and we are now good to go. So here's what we're going to do. We're first going to put a fixed location on this. So we're going to choose the fixed point. The fixed point is going to be the back surface. We're going to use the whole surface. We could choose just the edge if we ch wanted to, but typically we'll use the back surface as the total fixed point. From there, we're going to go ahead and put a force and a pressure, or a force or a pressure, or bearing load location. Okay, if it's going to be axial or a radial load, one or the other. But typically, we're just going to apply an external force to either to a surface or apply uniform pressure to a face. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to apply a force, but what we need to do is apply the force to the top edge. And so we're going to apply the force to both of the edges, but we need to pick a direction. Do we want it in that direction? That direction. Or we can use vector components, which is what I did here. So we're going to use vector components, and we're going to say, looking at the UCS icon, because that's what I'm looking here in the corner, I want to go with a negative Y. And we'll say this guitar weighs 35 pounds. So it's going to be a 35 pound force in a negative Y orientation. Fair enough. Way cool, easy to use. And it says select locations. I'm going to go ahead and select those locations. And we should be okay to apply. So we might have a we might have two forces now. And if we do, um, we're going to simulate and we'll check this. This should be, yeah, so we've got 70 pounds of load at this or Yeah, we've got 70 pounds of load. We're going to have to delete the two bottom ones. So we've got the upper ones. That looks good. So we now have fix on the back, force on the front, and let's go ahead and do a simulation to see what the analysis is. Ah, didn't define a material. So we have to define our material by choosing the assign button. And the original material is generic. We're going to use an override material here. And let's just go ahead and use something like, we'll just use simple 6061 aluminum. We'll choose OK, and we'll simulate it. We'll see what happens here. Now what we're really looking for is the displacement. And so this is giving us an overall stress, the von Mises stress. And so we're seeing the highest area of stress right there where we would expect it near that fixed point but what I'm interested in is the displacement distance and so the displacement distance is telling me that it's gonna move close to a quarter inch out at the ends that's not acceptable that's not an acceptable movement now granted we probably have 70 pounds of nope 35 pounds split equally uh, so it's one 35 pound guitar which is kind of a heavy guitar um, but we could actually back this down to 25 pounds and we can see what the result is. So we can update that and now we can just hit the simulate button again, rerun it, check our displacement. We can see that our stress analysis or the stress is about in the same location. The displacement though is about 700 less basically so that 10 pounds is equal to about seven hundredths of movement on the ends still not acceptable okay guitar is going to slide right off so that means we're going to either have to change the diameter of our tubing or the material so let's try and change our material this time so I've got 6061 currently let's go ahead and assign our material we're going to change the aluminum We'll change it to something a little bit more, um, we're going to do basic cast steel, and we'll rerun our simulation, and we'll check displacement, 0 0.06 in steel.
So the aluminum had a lot more flexibility or bending to it than the cast steel did. So just changing the material got it within the specifications that we need, which is 0 0.06, six hundredths of an inch is, is not going to move very much. So that would hold our guitar up. Um, we can also then check the stress area. Stress area is about the same still, though we're getting a little bit more stress all the way around than we did with the aluminum itself. So there you have it.